So I just want to really quickly say if my voice is a bit croaky, I have a bit of a chest infection, minor one, not a big one. So yeah, apologies in advance. Today's video, I'm going to attempt stage two of the Lap It Up series on Zwift, um, which is for the first time, first time I've ever ridden it, and I think it's a new course. Well, it's not a new course, but it's reverse. It's a new reverse version of an old classic, the Glasgow Crit. Um, it's a good course, actually. It's one of my favourites, so this should be good. Doesn't mean it's going to be any good in reverse, though. So we'll have to see. I will say, however, that I think I might actually be an official Zwifter now. I bought the Watt bike initially. It was a crazy impulse purchase. I downloaded Zwift. And I even bought shoes to clip into my pedals to be attached to the bike to make me a better Zwifter. None of them made me feel like I had crossed the line to become an official Zwifter. I've even made videos about whether or not I'm a runner or a Zwifter. I've bought something that I think officially makes me a Zwifter. Tools. I have bought tools specifically for the Watt bike. So for this thing that sits in my office that I race on Zwift on, I have bought tools to repair it. I don't know which ones I'm supposed to use. I'm gonna quickly interject here. I'm also gonna add some commentary to my three races in today's video. I'm gonna talk all over them. I've never repaired or even tightened a saddle on a bike before. That is evident from this intro. I have a new bike being delivered at the end of this month. We're in April at the moment. And watching this footage, that unboxing video, is gonna be a very interesting one. The reason why I've bought tools is because, I don't know if you can hear that, move the mic. This is wobbly. So when I'm cycling, all I can hear is, I'm gonna be brutally honest because I get comments about the positioning of my saddle. I haven't had many for, for a while, so I must look like I am in the right position roughly because I used to get loads of comments. So I'm gonna quickly do that now. That's not the right one. I've had the Watt bike for nearly a year now, so out of interest, would anyone be interested in a full Watt bike review video from me? My recent Zwift Play controller video, which was my first impressions video, was quite well received on my YouTube channel. So I'm considering doing something similar for the Watt bike that I've had for a long time now. Let me know in the comments if you think you'd watch that video, because it's not gonna be an easy one to make. Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't fit. I don't know why it is wobbling. It's got a proper wobble on. And I want to bring the seat up a bit. That's bad, I like that. Now, at this point, you've just watched a bloke poke a saddle with a stick for longer than is acceptable. So I'm gonna move on. Suffice to say that I sorted the saddle out. There we go. The seat's completely solid. Tools. How does that feel? Does that feel better? Oh yeah, the seat feels better. Oh, mama. I'm just gonna bring these forward a bit more. I don't know, I don't know where I want them to be. Yeah, that feels good. That feels better there. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna race with it. Yeah, that already feels, I was too far forward. I was all the way forward here. So I've moved them to here. I've altered the positioning of my saddle angle so it's not sloping forward as it felt like I was sliding off the bike when I was riding it before. I've raised it slightly, I've moved my handlebars closer to me, and I've done all of this through gut feeling alone. That already feels 10 times better. Good. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos now about saddle and handlebar positioning, and I'm still unsure of the optimum position. I've decided to simply go with feeling and gut instinct. I've now had 61 races on Zwift, and I think I've got the Watt bike set up in a way that feels optimum for me. It feels really good now. I'm still going for that win, that out and out first across the banner win. This isn't an attempt at a Zwift power win. This is an attempt at being the first across the banner. Last week's video was my return to Zwift after a shortest break of about two or three weeks, give or take. And I started this week Zwift racing on the Lap It Up on the Champs Elysees. Champs Elysees. That was last week's video. I finished in eighth over the line and in fifth on Zwift 
power. However, I'm not as bothered about Zwift power now as I used to be. Of course, I still check it, but I need that first over the banner win. That's what my race series on Zwift at the moment are all about. Now, I know that choosing a main race within the month's series is probably not the best way to get a win, um, but I, I really want to try the Glasgow crit circuit reverse. I really want to give it a go. So, um, and my power's not quite back to where it was a month ago. I've had two days off the bike since my last race, uh, so I should be refreshed. I've had a good breakfast. I'm feeling good, um, so I'm energised. I've had a good night's sleep, so there's no reason why I can't go for it. Glasgow Crit Reverse, it's not mental. What is it? It is 19 kilometres, so it's only six laps. It's not huge. It's 205 metres of climbing, though, so you know it's not an easy course, but it's not a big one. If you know what I mean. So if that makes sense, it probably doesn't. Okay, here we go. 10 seconds. I suppose I better start pedaling. Three, two, one. Okay, I've made some alterations to the bike, which I don't know whether it's a placebo effect or whether they have actually made a difference, but they feel like they've made a difference. So we're on the Glasgow Crit Reverse. Just need to make sure I don't get dropped. This is going to be brutal. I've got the window open, so if it's quite loud, you know why. I was in the wrong gear then. This is going to be absolutely brutal. I've now learned early on in racing in Cat D races that front groups form really quickly and then take off just as quick. I have to make sure that I'm in these groups for the takeoff, otherwise I have to drop silly watts for no reason using matches I need for later in the race. There's no excuse for getting dropped at the start. I'd rather use energy now, staying with the leaders, than being dropped and my race being over before it's even started. Saving energy for a mid-pack sprint is not my game strategy now. Kind of no man's land, so I need to get into this group. This is a really fast start. Oh my god. I shouldn't be this tired already. We've got a big old climb coming up. Uh, the other side of the Clyde kicker. Okay, calm down. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this beast. And having now dropped some weight and watching these races back in editing, I found my climbing a lot better. I enjoy climbing. Plus, I now always get out of the saddle and allow my weight to fall onto the pedals, which massively helps my climbing ability. Oh my God. So that's the start of the Clyde Kicker, just that marker there. <sighs> but one thing I still do that is wrong is I come off the power too early as I crest the climb, as it levels out, and this leads to almost being dropped at this point, forcing me to then have to use watts I don't have to then have to catch back on to those in front of me when I should be recovering in the draft. Okay, so this is the big climb. First time doing it. Here we go. I just need to stay on the watts a little longer as I come over the top of the climb and I need to stop fighting the urge to rest. And again, on this climb, I also came off the power slightly too soon. I need to stay out of the saddle and on the power for a few more seconds. Doing that would have got me into this small lead pack and in the draft. Instead, I'm in no man's land again. I'm aware I'm just too knackered to vocalize it when recording. Heart rate, Jesus Christ. Okay, fans going on. Fans going on. Thank you. I've gone to the front because I wasn't concentrating. Ay, ay, ay. Stay in the draft. If you haven't done so already, and I know roughly about 65% of viewers watching this video wouldn't have done so yet, please consider subscribing to this channel, to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot. I'm not gonna play the whole race in its entirety. I'll show just the highlights. I'm gonna also talk all over it. I mentioned that before. I'm gonna commentate on how I got on in these races. This is gonna be a tough old race in the last lap. And then without even realizing it, during the race, I managed to somehow obtain the green sprint jersey 
for that last sprint section. I also achieved it in the third race as well. God knows how, as I wasn't sprinting, I only saw it on the companion app after the race and in edit. Then we have this fun fella in the red jersey who was weaving all over the road like Starsky and Hutch trying desperately to drop us from his draft. He was making me dizzy. He wasn't just doing this just on this section. He was like this right from the start all the way to the end. It feels exhausting just talking about it, let alone racing like this. He actually finished the race in third, and I will say that he might have won if he didn't ride an extra 500 meters with all the swaying across the whole race. He must have covered more ground than we did. He was just weaving constantly. I should have tested these play controllers with this guy, the guy in red, uh, the one that's just dropped behind me, because he has been weaving. Here we go, climb. This guy that's pushing now. Oh, wrong gear. Oh, I didn't use my power up. What a moron. And I stay with the lead pack, including Michael Knight swerving like a drunk on a Friday night, all the way until the reverse Clyde kicker on lap three. Okay, using the feather. And this is where I start to get dropped. This decline is my nemesis. Even though I'm heavy, I've noticed that other stronger climbers use this section to power down and split the pack. It's quite a good tactic. Come up the climb strong and then absolutely go for it down the decline. Um, and it's something that I might start trying on this, on this course in particular. And then eventually with the help of the aero boost and reserve energy I didn't really have, I eventually catch back on that this mistake of being dropped had cost me. I'm getting dropped. There is a rider that has managed to attack and has gone off the front. I didn't have it in me to chase that down. I'm now using everything I have to stay with the dropped lead pack. And now this rider I'm drafting with is someone we have lapped. The ones I'm racing are now four or five seconds ahead of me. So I power into the climb as best I can. I think I've been dropped. but it's simply not enough and I'm left behind. I finished the race, sprint for the finish line. I always sprint for a finish line and I cross it in fifth place. Average. 225 watts, turn this off, off, Jesus, that's better, 225 watts, 2.3 watts per kg average, I'm getting back, I'm back baby, almost back, not quite. The guy that won did so by over a minute with a huge three watts per kg average. He absolutely crushed it to win this race. And on the back of this race, it looks like he's now been promoted to Cat C, so congratulations to him. Top five is always what I expect now, and I'm disappointed if I finish outside of this in a Zwift race in Cat D. I mean, that's gonna be a different story when I move up to C, but for now, top five is what I expect. So moving on to race two now, same back course, same back location. We're still on the Glasgow Crit reverse. <laughs> Today's race is stage two, lap it up on the Glasgow reverse course, on the crit course. It's my second attempt because I enjoyed the first one so much yesterday. Um, I've just been out for lunch, had a pizza, so I haven't digested that properly yet, but it should give me some energy to be able to get on this bike and burn it off. 
Okay, I'm on the bike, I'm in the pen. Why am I riding it again today? Well, two reasons. First reason is I really enjoyed the ride yesterday. I really enjoyed this course. I thought it was made for me. I like climbing, even though I'm really heavy. I, I enjoy climbing, I'm gonna say it. I enjoy climbing, um, within reason. Even though I came in fourth on Zwift Power, fifth over the line on here. Um, so I'm hoping today I can replicate being top five. That's the plan anyway. Also, I now know the course. I now have raced this course. I know it. I understand it. I know where the turns are. I know where the climbs are. Even though I've done the Glasgow crit the normal way round, it felt like a very different course. This may as well have been on a, uh, a different landscape with a different name. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go for it today. Okay, so far we've got about 45 people in this pen. So it's going to be a good one. I mean, this is a fast crit race anyway. I'm still going for my first win in Cat D over the line win. I've had my win on Zwift Power. Check out that video if you haven't seen it already. It's a good one. But I'm still going for my first win over the line in a race. Oh, my gears. Come on, get my gears up. That was close, right. Just a really quick interlude here guys, I've now set up my Patreon page for subscribers, you, to support me. I upload all kinds of things to my Patreon page that's in addition to my YouTube channel, such as early access videos, Q&As, and specifically if you enjoy watching my Zwift race videos and you think you might enjoy them in their entirety without me commentating all over them without any editing, then I upload these to my Patreon page in their full glory, which means no cuts or interruptions. Please head over there now if you wish to support me. Okay, these crit races, especially these mainstream crit races are always fast off the line, always. And I just don't understand why people let themselves get dropped so quickly. It makes no sense. I'm in the lead pack. The intention is to stay here. That's the name of the game now. Just to stay in the lead pack. So it looks like there's going to be, after this hill, depending on there's a small group behind us and then there's, a, there's all the stragglers. So I'll be interested to see what it looks like after the first climb. I'd be happy if it stays at this pace. We all know it won't stay at this pace as we head into the first incline and the effort levels ramp up from those at the front. This short climb strings out the surprisingly large lead pack. Oh, heart rate's pumped right up. And I don't know if you notice, but I also stay out of the saddle and on the power slightly longer this time to make sure my watts don't drop until we have 100% come over the top of the climb and then started to descend down the other side. Doing this gave me a fighting chance of staying in the draft of the lighter riders as they can kick over the top of the crest slightly faster than me, giving them an advantage of speed into the decline. And even though I'm faster in declines due to my heavier weight, it takes me longer to kick over and then speed up, if that makes sense. Hey, hey, hey. I then managed to catch back onto the lead group in the second lap and another Lone Ranger has attempted a breakaway with over 15k still to go. Zwift is crazy sometimes. 15k and this guy is attacking. And then in lap three, after using the climbs to pass those getting dropped, I then used the downhill section to catch back onto the chasing riders. <laughs>
try to catch on, but there are two that have now managed to cement a breakaway. I should have allowed this to go, as I didn't know it at the time, but they were juniors weighing in at only 42 kg each. I'll come back to this in a minute. 42 kg. <laughs> Stay with the chasing pack for the rest of the race. I'm really proud of my performance in this race. I drafted well, and more importantly, I climbed really well. Even using the climbs to my advantage and closing the gaps that had started to fall. <laughs> the line so obviously the two juniors weighing 42 kg each with power averages of 160 and then 140 watts were the winners here they were never not going to win this race and with a power to weight ratio like that obviously they were going to win i didn't know their weight to power ratio during the race it was only afterwards that i looked on with power and saw the data if only i had a sprint <sighs> This isn't me being bitter about the loss. I don't mind losing. I'm used to losing in Zwift, but I like to know it's a fair race and racing riders that weigh half my body weight in a game that's designed to give huge advantages to lighter riders, it's frustrating to know that I'm never gonna win that race. It's obvious that these two juniors were simply having a fun race together or maybe even a training race together as their stats, age, weight, etc., were so close and similar to each other for it not to be a coincidence seemed unlikely. I have no issue with this at all. Good luck to them. I just don't know what the solution is. Maybe I just need to get stronger so I'm able to compete with them. It's just something that I reacted to at the time. So it's in this video purely for that reason because it's part of my documenting my journey on Zwift. 239 watts has an average for 20 minutes. Let's turn this off. I'm very pleased to have been in the position to sprint for fifth place. The more I practice, the better I'll get at sprinting. And even though I finished in seventh, it was great to have got to the end in such a strong place and be able to sprint for fifth. It shows progress. Okay, so this part of the video is my third attempt at the Glasgow reverse. I'm going for a win. I'm still going for that elusive first across the banner win. Now I will say, this isn't me being negative. I think I'm disadvantaging myself by going for these mainstream Zwift um, prime time popular races. My point is that these prime time races are hit and miss about whether or not you are uh, going to have any chance of keeping up with the lead pack. But I love the Glasgow crit reverse, so I'm going to attempt it. I'm going to attempt it again today, first across the banner. That's the plan. I'm going to get on the bike. I'm feeling really good. I haven't had a huge breakfast, so I'm a bit worried about energy levels, whether or not I've got it in me to last the full distance at max effort. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna do a bit of a warm up now and uh, I'll see you three seconds from the start. Three, two, one. My gears were too high there. <sighs> okay, right, good. Other than messing up my gears, again, on the start line, I got off the start relatively easily. That's the leading complete. I will say this feels much more civilized so far. No silly uh, shenanigans, no one's weaving throughout the, uh, the lead group. Everyone seems to have the same vision in mind which is get the first lap under your belt without dying. Okay, I'll take that back. There's a guy off the front now. He's probably about two seconds off the front. Which seems unnecessary at this point. We're going into the first climb, for which I need to be at the front for.
thing that I do normally, which really lets me down, is I ease off the climbing before we summit it. I always lose a lot of power there. So I'm trying not to do that. Here we go. Part two. ease off now but I'm not going to oh, I forgot to use Y what a moron gears are wrong oh, I messed that up then I forgot to use my power up before the banner oh well the third race showed real signs of progress each race I learned something new I'm very happy with my performance in this race I drafted really well and attempted to conserve my energy as best I could. And I also used the climbs to attack and close down gaps where I needed to, even managing to drop a few trying to do the same in my draft. I'm getting dropped now. I also managed to remain in the small but really strong lead pack for four of the six laps, right up until the first climb of the second to last lap. With only 5k left to go, I then get dropped. I'm getting dropped. I might as well use it. I attempt to use my power up to catch them, but it's too late. They're too strong and I'm just too knackered from attacking the climbs. I've been dropped. Oh. Even though I know I'm dropped, I try really hard in the last lap to catch them, but unfortunately to no avail. Again, this was a good race and one I learned a lot in. Everything I had, everything. I messed up. I'm not gonna go into depth into my Zwift power data as that's really boring, but I will just quickly highlight that my average watts per kg has now reached a PB of 2.4 for the last two races on the trot, and my 20 minute effort in the last race peaked at 2.5 watts per kg. 
I am over the moon with that. 2.5 watts per kg for 20 minutes. That's phenomenal. I'm still looking for that first across the line win. It feels like it's getting so much closer now. I'm also conscious that Cat C is also getting so much closer, so I'm really desperate to try and get that win before I get bumped. I've got many, many more Zwifting videos coming up, so please like and subscribe if you saw value in this video. Also consider checking out my Patreon where I will be uploading loads of great exclusive and new stuff there as well. And I hope to see you in next week's video. Cheers, guys. Mirror, mirror 20 minutes, 242. Five minutes, 259. I'm getting closer to my peak. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah.